Our next guest is one of the youngest members of parliament representing the economic freedom fighters. She is a scholar, mother and a gender activist. Once in parliament, she was appointed to the Portfolio Committee on Health. As you know, the year 2020 delivered the biggest health crisis of our time. She joins us now to speak about her journey as a parliamentarian and the significance of Women's Day under lockdown. A very good morning to you, Naledi Chirwa. Thank you so much for joining us on Weekend Dawn. Um, what significance does this day, um, Women's Day, hold for you? Okay, sorry about that. Hi, Jacob. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think just generally, well, for me in particular, this day, you know, gives an opportunity to look and celebrate the moments and the movements that women um, actually established historically and obviously the 1956 Women's March. But more than that, but to also take stock of what has happened since then on a yearly basis, we have a chance to look back at our efforts, especially as members of parliament and those who are in public representative offices, to look at what we have done to ensure that how far women can go along um, in our struggle for equality, um, in our advocacy, and how we are supporting ground movements and how we are becoming ground-based movements as well. Um, and, you know, as a young Black woman today, there isn't much to celebrate, really, um, because there isn't political will to ensure that we have uh, the same amount of freedoms afforded to other people, in particular white men. Um, and this is the general problem for Black people as a whole, but for Black women and Black children and Black queers as well, it becomes an extra struggle to ensure that we are uh, laced on proper freedoms. Um, this is land, this is economically, this is politically, this is socially. Um, our lives are in danger, as we all know. Um, women continue to die at the hands of men on a daily basis. Men continue to die at the hands of men on a daily basis. Our children um, are dying each and every day at the hands of men. And there isn't much that is being done to ensure that beyond the violence that we face, that we are living ordinary and, and, and uh, lives that are laced with freedom. Um, so this day allows us to take stock, but to also strategize in moving forward and how do we make sure that different kinds of marginalized groups are able to claim the freedom that some of us are able to claim. So yeah. Uh, Naledi, as a parliamentarian and a member of the Portfolio Committee on Health, what are your thoughts on government's management of the coronavirus pandemic so far? Wow, I mean, that is pretty much obvious. They have failed. It's not an issue of a debate, really. I mean, the fact that the WHO is intending um, to bring experts in the country to assist with coronavirus, and the fact that we are the top five in the whole world in the, in the amount and the rate of infection, and also our reaction to it, is my around the fact that we were never ready, um, as opposed to what Minister Zulimki has been telling us for three months on end that our public health care system was ready. I think that is something to really consider when we look at how far we have gone um, and how many lives we have lost, lives that could have been saved. Because a minister of health came out and told us the whole country on the record that our country, our public health system is ready. And then we find that that is not the case. I've done numerous oversight visits um, in different provinces, but more, more basically in Gauteng, um, and found that there is no such thing as readiness. Uh, just a few days ago, I was in George Mukari Hospital. Persons under investigation and those who are confirmed cases actually share the space. There is no space. People are being investigated for coronavirus, are sitting in, 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 in passages in the hospital. There isn't standardized uh, PPE for workers. That is why we've seen so many infection rates of workers. And the fact that uh, healthcare workers are dying out as well is also due to the fact that there's corruption also at the foundation of this whole thing. Uh, I think it is something that we must take very seriously that the ANC found an opportunity to loot and to sum up their greed when we are going through a pandemic. Um, but more than anything else, poor people, again, black people, again, mm. are faced with the repercussions of having a government that lied to them and told them that the country is ready for a universal pandemic when it wasn't. And more than that, for even keeping information away from people to tell them that actually the one group that is mostly affected by the death, by the infection, because of social and economic makeup of our country is black people. Um, and for me, that is a genocide also. For the EFF, we have said on countless and numerous occasions that how the government has went about this was in actual fact very compromising for black people in particular who live in squatter camps, um, who take taxis to work, who work in white corporations in the city hubs, um, who don't work in their immediate spaces and who don't have the liberty 
that many of us have to be able to work from home. Um, and, and yeah, the issue of the coronavirus is something that's being very underlooked, especially because we see numbers on a daily basis, but those numbers are not even premised on what exactly is happening because currently you're not testing people who have already died. And even though we have already suggested this to the minister to see the real picture of what's happening, right? Um, and, uh, not enough tests again are being processed. Not enough tests again are being, are being made in the country. We are sitting on almost 4 million tests in a population of 60 million people, um, six months down the line. That is, that is atrocious, in fact. In fact, that is a genocidal tool that not enough people are being tested. And there's so many rules being set up on who gets to get tested. In the Western Cape, people under the age of 45 don't necessarily get tested unless they have severe symptoms of coronavirus. That, again, is also a, a, a violation of human rights because all of us have a right to the highest quality of health care. And many human rights are being trampled upon. The right to dignity, the right to information, the right to quality health care is being trampled upon. And that is where we are at today in South Africa in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the make of the coronavirus. Are women able to get adequate access to sexual reproductive health rights um, under this lockdown? Well, the answer is yes and no. There's many factors that filter into how women get access to health, to quality, sexual reproductive health, right? If we're speaking about the middle class and the rich people in the country, they are able to access sexual reproductive health right there, if they are SRH, right? right? But women in Daung, in the villages, in the townships, don't have a adequate access to SRHR, right? We still have women who go to clinics and are turned back because contraceptives have run out. We still have women um, who are turned back from wanting to have abortions and termination of pregnancies. And right now we are sitting on top of a report that was released by the Commission for Gender Equality on February um, that speaks about the forced and coerced sterilization of HIV positive black women, right? And the department five months later has said absolutely nothing about this. The Minister of Health has not even uttered a single word on it. The president uh, has not said anything about it. And the Minister and the Presidency for Women, um, Youth and Persons with Disabilities have not said anything about this report. We are sitting on top of a very serious and a brutal system um, of, of, of torture and human uh, treatment of black women in particular were HIV positive. Um, this report had recommendations set out for the National Department of Health and the provincial departments as well on how to go about in amending the situation that we find ourselves in. Um, that black women who are living with HIV are finding themselves in the fact that you can just wake up as an HIV positive woman uh, five years down the line and find out when you're family planning that you can't have children anymore. And when you trace your steps, you find that you were sterilized while you were in labor, while you couldn't even consent, uh, while you didn't even fully consent to sterilization. It's something that should cause outrage across the country because that is exactly what happened. We have a report in the country of such a gruesome act of torture and violation of human rights. Um, so in that case, there is different levels into who is able to access uh, sexual reproductive health rights. And HIV-positive black women currently in the country do not have that liberty. In fact, many of them are still yet to find out what happened to them. I think even it even goes across the board uh, because eugenics is a known system, right? And black women have been the victims of eugenics for a very long time. And voluntary motherhood is something that women of all races have fought for and actually achieved, uh, feminists in particular. And the fact that there is a government today in Africa, in South Africa, a country which is supposedly applauded for having the best constitution is able to trample on that very same constitution because it is able to and they can get away with it and that there will be not any public grace, there will be not any public organizing or agitating um, that happens to ensure that black women's lives, black women's rights to sexual health and productive health uh, are not fought for is something that really calls uh, for serious scrutiny and for serious confrontation with the government of the day. There's absolutely no way that uh, there was a 17 year old woman back in 1997 who was sterilized because she was HIV positive and there is no justice for her to date. 48 of them who are mentioned in the report by the CGE and to date they have not received justice. To date they have not been met with the recommendations that have been proposed by the CGE that the Minister of Health, the NDOH and the provincial departments in the least meet with them uh, and take accountability of what happened. 
that there is no strife to ensure that this does not happen again in the future um, in terms of the law and legislation, because that's also our duty as well, to ensure that the law is constantly going, uh, undergoing, evolving and changing to ensure that it covers different kinds of people, right? Uh, and the fact that we are still here, um, I mean, this is definitely a message to William Kiza, the Minister of Health, that there's absolutely no way that you have kept quiet for six months after the report has been released, that your department sterilized HIV positive black women without their consent or forcefully. All right, uh, Naledi Chirwa, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it right there. Um, I would have liked to still get into asking you about the national health insurance, as I know you traveled extensively um, before lockdown with the portfolio committee um, to consult on the public about the national health insurance. So I'm sure we'll have you back sometime soon to talk a little more about the state of the health uh, system in South Africa. That was EFF Member of Parliament and gender activist Naledi Chirwa speaking to us about the significance of women Women's Day and her concerns as a member of the Portfolio Committee on Health.